la misa. La misa. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Has Razan joined in? Razan is not here yet. Um, let's give it a minute. Let's see if she joins in. Uh, and Mariam is here. Mariam, you can open up your, uh, you can share your screen if you like. Are you talking to me? Um, talking to Miriam. Miriam, okay. Miriam, I think you need to log in from the other computer as well because the computer that you are on, I don't think it has audio. I don't see you unmuted. You're still muted. I'm unmuted now. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, go ahead. You share your screen and give us uh, after hours review. Okay. Okay, so um, for the soft features, S and P, it, um, Nasdaq and Dow are all down a little bit. And um, for the gainers and losers, um, Hess Corp, Marathon Oil Corp, Apache Corp, Halliburton Corp, and Egg Resources Inc. are all up like they they increased after hours, and there are also mainly oil companies. And then on um, Tapestry Inc., Molson, Coors Beverage, um, Moody's Corp, Tech, Technip, FMC, PLC, um, Hartford Financial are all down a little. They um, they decreased after after hours yesterday, um, and. There are, some of them are like one of them is a beverage um, company, one of them is some of them are financial, and some of them are um, oil companies. Mm, which one's oil? Tapestries Inc. is oil. Okay, what is EOG uh, resources? Um, Is 
an oil stock. Okay, click on uh, profile. Yeah, thank you. Did you click on it? Okay. Yeah, it's a And oil and it produces oil and gas and key minerals. Okay. Okay. Uh, and what was tapestry? Okay, luxury accessories and lifestyle brand. Okay, so oils are all up. So what's happening to oil itself? Um, I think. No, the pr price of oil per barrel. Um, the light food, commodities. It's increasing. Mm -hmm. It's still sixteen, seventeen dollars. You see that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. What else should we know? The um, market. Okay. The world markets are mixed. Um. So Hong Kong and Japan, um, they're up a little bit, and then England and Germany went down, and then. The commodities are also mixed because natural gas went down a little bit and then gold and corn went up a little bit and light crude went up. Um, not too big, but it went up. Like. Okay. Yesterday was about $15, 15, 16. Okay. Um, anything else that that's interesting on this page? Um, I think that's it. Okay, what about this major news? Um, Shell gets dividend for the first time since World War II as oil demand collapses. Okay, what does cutting a dividend mean? Um, Um, it means so like um cut the amount of cash. Say that again. Like um like it affects like how um, like it cuts the company's cash kind of. No. No dividends are share of the profit that is given to shareholders. So different companies at different times may decide to give a few cents or a few dollars, depending on the price of the share. Uh, if the company is in profit, to, to, to that small amount of money is given to uh, shareholders. So if somebody owns 100 shares, whatever the dividend is, time hundreds, if somebody owns 1,000 shares, that, that profit would be dividend times 1,000. Uh, so Shell, for the first time, cuts its dividends. Uh, so it's not giving as much dividend in terms of, I, I'm guessing, a percentage without reading the news. Uh, 
for the first time since World War II. So this had not happened before. Yesterday, all, all the oil companies were up. And a lot of people made a lot of money yesterday who were, who were still invested in oil stocks. Um, I'll come back to that in a few minutes. Uh, would, you, would you share your uh, think or swim portfolio and show us what you have done with that? Okay, what did you say? Can you share your think or swim portfolio? Um, okay, so Yesterday, yesterday I made a thousand dollars, but it reduced because um it reduced to six hundred this morning because um I think it was because Norwegian cruise I bought a hundred shares of Norwegian cruise lines yesterday and Can you share your oh you didn't share. Go to share. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Um. So yesterday I had um a thousand three fifty, but it reduced today to six hundred seventy two. Because I think it was because um when I did when I, I when I bought Norwegian Cruise Line, it was at fifteen dollars, and then it went up to eighteen dollars yesterday, but then it came down to sixteen again today. So, and then um I also bought um. Occidental Petroleum yesterday at um at four. Oh. You bought it at. Bought at fourteen dollars. Now what's the current price? Sixteen. Okay. Because yesterday I was like making okay. hundred dollars off of this, so it reduced. Okay, so. Uh, yesterday you had over a thousand dollars in uh profit mm -hmm. right yeah. so this is and, and now you have 693 so so this is also important to get out of a stock when the stock has uh hits hit its uh uh highest if you don't get out the price and the price to uh, price value starts to go down stock price starts to go down um, you will not realize those profits, right? Yeah. How long have you actually been trading? Um, two days. For just two days. Yeah. So, so you can see if you can make, um, you know, right now it's close to seven hundred dollars. Uh, if you actively continue to trade, you can have a better portfolio. So I'm expecting that. In the next few weeks, when you get a chance to share uh, again, uh, you would have a lot better portfolio than this. Okay. Okay. You want to talk about how how did you how did it feel to make a make more than a thousand dollar profit yesterday? Um, I was really happy, and then I told my dad, and he was like, and he was like to my mom, "Did you hear her? She made a thousand three hundred and fifty, and." Actually, half of it was on accident because I actually bought a hundred shares of Occidental Petroleum instead of ten, and then um, and then so he and then he was like, "Did you hear your daughter? She made she made a thousand dollars. She made thirteen hundred dollars on accident." Okay, so you so your dad was happy. Yeah. Who's your dad? You. Me. Okay. <laughs> Okay. That is so sweet. <laughs> so. Great job. Okay. And I was very happy. You know, I could see that she was happy and that made me very happy. Um, and she was, for some reason, avoiding actually trading um, until two days ago. So, so once she's, you know, once she, once she actually started trading, uh, she can see that 
she can make money out of this, right? So, and how, how long did it take, Mariam? Yesterday, how, how much time did you spend on this? I just, like I made the purchases in like maybe 10 minutes and then I left it because at first I started losing money and I was like, oh my God. And then um, I came back, like I went outside and then um, after I came back at around sunset, it was like $1,300. I was like, oh my God. Okay. Okay, good job. So, um, so even though it's paper money, uh, it gives you that practice. You know, you will lose money sometimes. You know, you can see, I see you have a very extensive portfolio. You don't have a lot of stocks for others. You, you may have just one or two shares. One, yeah, one share most of the, for most of these. But you can see that some of these are in parentheses. Any number that's in parentheses means that's a, uh, that's a loss. Um, so for example, on GE's 100 shares that you have, you're losing about $14. But what should you do when the price goes down? Um, I should sell it. No. Like get out of it. No. You should buy more because they are cheaper now. As long oh. as the company, as long as the company is solvent, you know the company is, uh, you know, for example, uh, either big cap or you know something about the company that others may not know. Uh, or the stock has a history of comeback. In that case, as the price goes down, you should buy, buy more. That would reduce your per share uh, cost. Okay? So the moment uh, this, that particular company stock starts to do better, uh, you will recover faster. But but if there is any risk, and I'll show you today, uh, if the if it is a risky stock, and um, uh, and you continue to go down, double down on it, uh, it can cause problems as well. So you have to be very careful when you're making those decisions. You can't just blindly go in. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, that concludes our morning review. Um, so let's see what's happening right now. It's 9.18, so we still have a few minutes. I'm not gonna go through the drill that we usually uh, go through with the stock market watch. Um, I have a few things to share, but I need a minute to log in to some of these systems. Um, good morning. If anybody has a question, please go ahead. I do have a question. Can we go over, and I'm sure you're good this anyway, but I just want to go over the information that we, the homework that we were supposed to do. So I did it. I'm just trying to figure out how to read that information and what to do with it because- Sure, I'll sure. Why don't you share your screen? Yeah, why don't you share your screen? Um, I have a question real quick. So when you are in the sink and swim and you're looking at the um and you're looking at the account summary part, so which part tells you how much money you've made so far? I'll go to think of something. Uh, uh, yeah. M monitor tab. Asaki can show you. Um well that's what we were trying to figure out before too. Hold on. Sorry, say that again. We were trying to figure that out before. And it was kind of difficult to see. Hold on. Yeah, so uh, it's okay. I'll, I'll talk about it. Can you see uh, this screen? It says, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So in the monitor yeah. tab, I know that down here, well, up here, this, this left part shows some stuff. And then down here, for the most part, you can see down here oh, on the I right. Screen. 
Um, Maya, but, you, Maya, do you see the screen? No, all I see is the top gainings and losing stocks list. Okay, hold on. See it now? You see it now? It's the black, yeah, okay, yeah. I see it. Okay, um, so down here is where you can see it, right? Good job, I did 32,000. Yeah, and, and, cool. and, okay. and yesterday, and remember two days ago, I was down 40,000 because I made this silly mistake of um, selling 2,000. First, I thought I bought it, but I, oh. I sold 1,000 and then I sold another 1,000 and I didn't know Think or Swim would let you sell stuff you didn't have. So Why before the negative, I was up 25,000. Then I dropped forty thousand, and then yesterday, just by picking up Amazon, I would I um, in two days I came up to thir uh, thirty two thousand, and now I'm waiting for um, waiting to buy this uh, what is this Merker. So, so, it, so right from away. that perspective, from, so from that perspective, you made seventy two thousand dollars. Yes. Off of sixty thousand. Yes. Wow, that is awesome. That is so good. Okay. Um, why is your oxy showing uh a because negative that's the one percent. i messed up on i thought i bought it ah, I and see. i had actually sold it and i was like oh okay well since i bought a thousand let me sell a thousand and i sold it and another thousand but i don't i just don't understand how it allowed me to sell something i didn't have and apparently it's calling right. it a short right right so that would be shorting and this is one of the issues with think or swim uh, it lets you sell right away, um, you know, if you had the kind of cash that it shows you. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, if you wanted to do this in Robinhood, uh, you, you know, uh, they do have the option for shorting, but it's not as easy uh, so, to make. I, I, have, I have never accidentally uh, shorted in uh, Robin. Okay, and you can do it in Charles Schwab either, but even this one, I'm waiting to buy a thousand and I wanted to do a duplicate, uh, an opposite order right away. Mm -hmm. And it gave me a message here. I did it actually, but it said, this stock is not available to borrow. If you want, to use, if you want us to try to locate it for you, please call our trading desk. So I would have oh, messed this up again. Mm -hmm. But I just want to sell it 50 cents higher, but I guess I got to wait until that bell. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, you wanted to sell it, but the, the way you were setting it, you were set, you would have sold it before you bought it. Exactly. And I didn't okay. know that that was possible. So yeah, I'm glad it didn't work this time too, because I just want to buy it and sell it right away without having to think about it, but it doesn't work out. A question real quick. Um, I know what day is and I know what GTE is. What is the GTC and then with the extension, like the underscore That's yeah. after hours. So good till closing, extended good hours. Till cancel. Good till cancel. Good till, good till clock cancel, extended hours. Yep. So that means you can, so that, that allows you to buy, well, I guess, make transactions after the market has closed. Right, <laughs> but... Um, think or swim doesn't do it that way. Even though the option is there, it I, I've tried it several times and it still hasn't sold. When I got to my limit, it still didn't sell it or buy it. I don't know why. Uh, uh, Navi, can you please um, go over the one where you said um, is the option that you pick so that you don't lose money? I think it's called like um, yeah, stop loss. Stop, the stop one. Stop loss. Can you, can you, can so you? So normally, so for here? example, let's say, uh, let's look, yeah, go ahead and open this order. Uh, you can, you can do cancel and replace or create a duplicate order. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then stop, stop limit. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you say stop limit, you're basically saying, go ahead, select the stop limit. So what, let's try to read this line. So you're basically, um, uh, what is this MRKR? Uh, marker, something yeah. that I found. On marker the therapeutics. Yeah. 
So marker therapeutics, you want to sell, uh, you want to buy 1,000 share right. of this when the price reaches 2.73, but once it hits, even if, uh, so let's say, you know, you want to buy 1,000, but there's nobody selling 1,000 shares at 2.73. Mm -hmm. So let's say there are only 100 shares available. So it'll go ahead, it'll immediately buy um, uh, 100 shares that are available to purchase, but then it'll convert that order into market order and purchase whatever price they may be available at. Okay. Okay. So, so, so this makes more sense when you are actually selling. So if you change, uh, instead of buy, make it sell. Mm -hmm. Select sell again. Okay, so now let's try to read it. So usually you would set a stop limit when you are selling. So this order says sell 1000 stocks of uh, marker therapeutics if the price hits 2.73. So if you had a limit sell of 2.73, uh, what would be the, be the difference between limit selling at 2.73 and stop limit at 2.73? So if the price dropped to 2.73 and you had a limit pricing, you were trying to sell 1000, but there were there was only a seller for only 100 stocks. It'll sell 100 stocks and then it'll stop. Let's say the price uh, went down further. It will stop because it's not getting 2.73. You wanted to sell at 2.73. Your, your price now is higher than the market value. So nobody's gonna buy your stock. But with a stop limit, it will convert rest of the order to market order. So whatever price you can get, it will continue to sell until you sell out all of your stocks. Asaki, can you go back to, is, is, I wanna make sure I'm pronouncing it. Am I pronouncing your name right? Asaki, yes. Okay, good. Um, texting is different. Uh, when you go to order, can you go back to the drop down where it says stop limit? Hold on, let me put this back. Can I put it down? Right where it, ha no, where it has the, oh, you can to buy something. It's your money. Uh, why do you want to buy, why do you want to buy a 270 when stock price is 227 right now? What? what you see what's the price right now, right? It says last was 227. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the ask is 273. Okay. And either, are these options? Are you buying options? Oh, yes, the bid is still lower than that, right? Right. So look at the chart. Go to charts. I got one minute. You see it? Oh, it's working. Yeah, but the way I'm reading it, the stock is at 227. All right, say no more. Um, what did it go to now? That's a good price stock? Sure. <clears throat> okay. All right, so you said go where, Erica? Uh, I was asking you to go go to charts, but that's okay. You already did. Uh, go back to monitor. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anybody else has a question? Uh, for yeah, us? Well, Erica had a question. Sure. I was asking when it talked about where it had the, the stop limit versus um limit i wanted to see if they were in the same drop down menu because i saw oh, them wait a minute. yes they were okay wait something's wrong here something's definitely wrong here but this is still at the 
so I have to. Because you created a duplicate order and then you changed. Oh, shoot. Um, so it should, it should have sold this already. It should have bought this already. Yeah, because it says best, right? It always says like, if yeah, whatever is the best, whatever is the best market, because one stock may be available from different uh, stock exchanges. So it'll buy minute. it from whatever is the best stock uh, exchange. Okay, so now it doesn't make any sense. Okay, there you go. So it bought. But it booted at 273. How's because it jumped? Yeah, because, because you had set a higher price. So you had said, yeah. So I'm going to create an opposite. Okay. So 22. I'm good with making just a 50 cents on it. Right? Yeah, sure. 50 cents time a thousand. That's, that's a respectable number. Go back to monitor. I'll leave that there. That's no big deal. If it drops to that much, I'm, I'm fine to that for that. Okay. Um, sorry, Erica. You said go where? No, it's okay. So I'm, I'm listen. I'm just trying to make some money too. Like you, so I'm just mimicking <laughs> stuff. So we bought it at. So I got my thing working now. What are we selling it at? Um, for me, you mean? Yes. So I bought it at two seventy three. Mm -hmm. I want to make fifty cents on it. Um, okay. I think I changed it to, yeah, to 327. No, that wasn't it. It's working still, 322. Asaki, are you saying that your opposite is your sell price? Well, when I, whenever, I pre, whenever I buy, so this one, it says filled order. So if I right click on it and go to opposite, yes, I'm trying to sell it. You can right click on a sell as well and it'll pop up as a buy. Is that your, does that answer your question? Yeah, I just want to make sure I understand how you're using the term opposite. You're using yes. the term opposite as either buy or sell. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. And when we do when um when we do it where we like set up the opposite order, is it best to do it at the um good tail change or to do it at the stop limit? Because I like to do it at the good tail change. Cancel, you mean? Cancel, I mean, yes, I'm sorry. Um, and this was wrong. Let me, uh, but it that. doesn't give me that option to do the opposite order. It doesn't give me the option to do it good till cancel. It only gives. Me Say it again. What what is it? What did you do? Buy or sell? About the sell. Well, not about to, but I'm setting up my sell order. So if you click, um... oh, I see it. I'm sorry. I was I was in the wrong thing. I was in. Okay, so, so what's that's my so what's the difference between the TIF, which would give you the good tell cancel and stuff, and then there's this other option that talks about the market, the limit. Oh, I've got the limit price. Okay, I got that. Don't pay me anymore. What are you talking about? Okay. Talking about here? I, I have it. Okay. Yeah. I'll, so why don't you click? The, yeah. The. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Go to um, the, go to charts. Order. Go okay. to your charts. Uh huh. If you wanted to track multiple uh, stocks at the same time by looking yeah. at their charts, go to charts, please. My charts. Yes. If you wanted to look at multiple charts at the same time, uh, you could do flexible grid. Um, you see the uh, the sub yeah. menu. Yes. Yep, there you go. Nice. So it'll bring up every box. Will give you. You can put a different company in there. Um, and track all these companies uh, simultaneously. Um, there you go. Why does Google have two different um, uh, two yeah. different things? That's ex that's the same exact description, and it's trading at just about the same. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, Google changes company names and uh, it created uh, different segments uh, a few years ago. Uh, 
so that may be it, but, but that would be a good question for Google to answer. So if you okay. just Google that question, okay. uh, the, what, what is the difference between Gog L and Gog V? Uh -huh. It'll tell you what had happened in the past and why those two tickers okay. exist. And you guys see that it's pretty much at the same amount. Right. It's weird. Very close Very to weird. each other. Yeah. Um, okay, so now I'm going to share. Um, let me share, which is this one. So um, when I go here, the comparisons. So I wrote down what this stuff means. I mean, what, what it stands for, but I forgot what um what were what would be the determining factor on which one we go with so i see that the quick the least quick ratio is um american airlines mm -hmm. which means that they have the least amount of money short-term money mm -hmm. So they'll run out. So bottom line is they'll run out of money the fastest, right? Yeah, they they already don't have almost 70% of their liabilities that they need to pay in the short term. So you mean they can't cover it? They don't have enough money to cover it. Right, right. So let's say if they have a hundred dollar utilities bill, they only have thirty dollars to pay down that hundred dollars. Uh, so they'll still be left out with $70 that they need to pay for that bill. So okay. what happens uh, when a situation like that happens, the company usually borrows uh, money from somewhere else. So increases its, uh, increases its uh, uh, debt in most cases, or if it is a long-term issue, they can, uh, they can even issue more stocks, but for, for that, they have to uh, they have to do a number of regulatory things before they can issue more stocks. But those are two options to raise money uh, to pay down pay down those debts. So companies like these um, usually, you know, companies like American Airlines would not go under uh, that easy because. Or th there's a third option; they could also sell some of their uh, stocks, I mean, excuse me, sell, sell some of their uh, assets uh, to raise money to meet their financial liabilities. Now, none of those are desirable options. So if you had a choice between a company, for example, airline, uh, American Airlines versus Spirit, you can see that Spirit, if they get a $100 bill they have $120 left over uh -huh. or available to pay pay down that debt. So you mean they have $20 over, not $120. $120. They got a $100 bill, they got $20 left over, right? No, Spirit Airlines uh, quick ratio is 1.2. So you right, have... so you said if they get a bill for $100, they have, they have $120, $120 left... available in cash. Oh. Oh, okay. They have more money available in cash than the yes. bill that is coming in. Yes, so, so you can see that their uh, creditors are not going to have any problem. Uh, they will be paid, right? Because they have money. So from financial point of view, it, is, uh, it looks like Spirit Airlines is in a much better shape financially uh, than any of the other airlines. Mm -hmm. So... Allegiant and Hawaiian Airline, uh, by the way, Hawaiian Airline, I think they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy already, or they're planning on doing that. I, I was reading that yesterday. Um, I, received, uh, I received an email from United Airlines this morning. Um, I'm sure if you, if you are a United uh, Airlines uh, frequent flyer member, you would have received that as well. You said uh, United Airlines filed United or Hawaii? Air. Sorry? Who did you say filed? United, United or Hawaii? No, Hawaiian Airlines filed for Chapter 11. Or preparing to file for Chapter website? 11. Sorry? Remember you gave up this website the other day? For? Um, can you see my screen? 
Yeah, but I can only see the top gaining and losing stocks uh, sheet oh, that you had. Um, let me just ask a quick question. Um, I was absent Tuesday. The quick ratio and our uh, return on an, uh, uh, ROE, where where do we get that information from? Uh, from the perspectives or is that on the top? Where do we get that information from? Good question. Asaki, you can uh, answer that question, right? Can you, you can't see it yet, hold on. Asaki, Asaki we can see this whole window, yeah. this uh, browser window. So if you open up another uh, tab. It did, but it doesn't look like it's moving. Okay, well, there's always an option to reshare. Okay. So this right here, um, you said, where do we get this from? Yes, I was just, um, I don't recall. I missed Tuesday, yeah. so I don't know where we got that. Okay. Are we getting from a prospectus or something? So on Tuesday, we talked about how to calculate these directly by looking at um, a company's uh, uh, balance sheet and income statement. Um, but there is a quicker way of, of searching that, and that would be Finviz. Finviz, remember Finviz has a table whenever you pull a, a, a data about a company? Yeah. Uh, in that table, there is one uh, cell that gives you, okay, there you go, that's Finviz. Mm -hmm. And this table here. Right. Can you point to quick ratio? Right here. Right there, that's quick ratio. So quick ratio. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so is this a condensed version of what they call a prospectus? Um, prospectus may, uh, you know, that's usually company's own issued document. Oh, I see, I see. Right, so yeah, Enough. these calculations are, they may have some of this data available in prospectus, but um, but this is more uh, calculated from, from the information that is available publicly, not just from that company, but from other sources as well. Okay, this is more, much more unbiased. This is, right. okay, this is much. Right. right. Thank you. So, um, so you were I'll, talking I'll share the, the, um, uh, the, the Tuesday's class is uh, uh, available on YouTube. I will, uh, I'll try to share that, that, that link with you. Are all of our classes exactly. available on YouTube? Because I'm going to have to do a whole total refresher. <laughs> okay. Just to make sure that I, I'm on track. So, so that's why we do the refresher every day. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't just continue to move forward. Whenever I do, whenever I talk about a new concept, we repeat it several times. So quick ratio, uh, can you go back to the sheet, please? Uh, quick ratio, you calculate that by, um, by dividing liquid assets by current liabilities. So liquid assets divided by current liabilities, it gives you a measure of short-term liquidity and cash flow. So it tells you how sound the company is in terms of meeting its financial obligations. Um, RO it was ROA, not ROE. So oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, well, ROE oh. is an actual term, but that's uh, return on equity. Um, oh, so I copied the wrong. But this particular one, the one that we were talking about was ROA, return on assets. Um, so you take uh, net income and divide it by total assets. Um, that gives you return on assets. And it basically measures profitability as it indicates per dollar profit uh, a company earns on its assets. And then we had, uh, oh, I see you, you have more ratios listed than we talked about. So ROE would be equity. Yeah, what is that? Uh, return on equity. So uh, equity divided by, uh, by equity, no. Uh, hold on. 
That's only, I just moved it. I just created this new column just because I, I copied the wrong column the whole time. I was copying ROE instead of ROA. I see. Okay, so return on oh. equity calculates, oh. is calculated by dividing net income by the shareholder equity. Uh, net, income, net, net income, income divided by uh -huh. equity, shareholders equity. So that shareholders equity, if you remember, that is a cell in any balance sheet. Most balance sheets would have a cell, a row called shareholders equity. So you just take net income from income statement divided by uh, the number that is present under shareholders equity, uh, ROE. Um, so it basically tells you how um, the, the profitability company's profitability based on equity. So per dollar equity, how much profit a company is able to make. Uh, best way to look at it would be to go to uh, Finvis, pull two companies charts and compare uh, those two. So, <clears throat> Uh, well, in this case, let's look at it. Uh, ROE. Did you say it means how much profit a company is able to make? Uh, based on equity, per dollar in equity. So the previous one was based on profitability based on per dollar in assets. This one is per dollar in equity. Equity is Equity is also an asset, right? But total assets is a larger number. Equity as an asset is a smaller number. But different companies would have different values. So for example, American Airlines is 2.8% ROE compared to United, that's 28%. Spirit is 15.8%. So if you, if you just looked at ROE, you may be inclined to put more money towards United Airlines. That's why we do not make a decision based on just one number. We, looked at, we look at different numbers. So, so ROE says go with United, but you look at quick ratio and quick ratio says, no, no, hold on. Because they only have half the money to pay down. So there's a likelihood that if they are not able to raise the remaining 50% of of the liabilities that they have to pay on on month to month basis, uh, they may have to sell their assets um, or increase their assets, increase their uh, shareholder equity by selling more stock. So either one of those things is going to be a problematic. So so then you want to hold on and not invest too much in United. You may still invest some, but not a whole lot. Um, same thing with uh, Southwest Airlines, 23% ROE, but not enough cash available to cover its current liabilities uh, as, as it shows in quick race show. So, um, however, if you look at Spirit, ROE is uh, in the middle between highs and the lows, but but they have a lot of cash available. So that may, so, so there's a balance between those two numbers for Spirit Airline in the favor of Spirit Airlines. But Spirit Airline has a lot of other issues going against it. So while they may be financially solvent, there may still be problems. So ultimately uh, you have to look at a lot of, uh, uh, data points and and decide you know whether you want to invest in a company or not. Okay. Okay. So, so this is this 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 analysis. Are you doing this on um, the long term investment side or the short term? Either. Okay. Um, so even in the short term, you still want to understand the companies and the. the the good thing about this analysis is that once you have done it for a set of companies, so for example, this analysis one was done 
just for the airline industry and the US airline industry it does not include foreign airlines. So in future, you would have a history being developed uh, in your own mind, you know, how different US airlines behave in terms of, uh, in terms of this analysis. So, okay. So, so my question is, yes. um, how are we now, now that we have this information, let me write down one more, hold on. 5.7. Okay, so now that we have this information, um, what are we doing with it? Yes. What, so, who looks like the more sound company? And I still don't understand. Okay, so this means profitability indicates the price. I don't even know what that means. It, it equals, it measures the profitability as it indicates the per dollar profit. What does that mean? So it, it, it shows a company's ability to make profit. So let's say this one company makes... Uh, uh, two point eight percent profit. So two point two dollars and eighty cents for every one hundred dollar in assets. That would be American Airlines. But for the same hundred dollars, uh, Allegiant Air makes seven dollars and ninety cents. United makes five dollars and eighty cents. Delta five dollars and forty cents. So for every hundred dollars in assets. That's the kind of money they are making. So a number for a company by itself may not be as meaningful as it becomes meaningful when you compare it for one company to the other. So we're looking, in this instance, we're looking, so the company that has the higher percentage is the more sound company in just this, just ROA, correct? Right, right. So, so the numbers that you have shows Allegiant Air is, is more more sound company to make investment, but that's what that's where I say that you can't make a decision based on just one factor. Uh, you also have to see quick ratio, you have to see ROE, you have to see debt to equity ratio, and a number of other factors uh, before you make any uh, major decisions with the that stock. I have so a quick, quick ratio. I'm sorry. sorry. So a quick ratio. The company that has the highest. Uh, quick ratio number is the more sound company just based on quick ratio, correct? Right. Okay, go ahead, sorry, ask your question and then I have another one. Okay. Um, so how do, you, how do you know which one is the most value column to look for? Because uh, especially in airlines that we did it, uh, if we go for what we learned at the beginning, uh, obviously American Airlines okay. and that Delta has the more um, market cap and also has the more employees and mm -hmm. it has the less um, sell it or not sure float. But if we if we compare it to what we look in this uh, this week, um, the, the little companies like Spirit, um, a legend, they they have the best numbers. So how do you, which column will be like the best to look for? Yeah, so, so this is why I hesitate to make a, uh, make a, you know, a prophetic decision that, okay, this is it, you know, go with, with this company or that company based on some of these, uh, uh, based on just some of these factors, because markets are more, a lot more complex than that. So, the best thing is to establish your own understanding of the company's uh, inner workings. So for example, while you are in the learning phase and while you have your paper money account, the best thing to do would be to start investing some of the money and you know, buy 100 stocks for each of these airlines and let it sit, see how these companies do actually in terms of earning you uh, profit on, on, on buying and selling of the shares. Okay. So of course, a company like American airlines with a quick ratio a very low quick ratio of uh, 0.3 has a much bigger 
uh, market cap than Spirit Airlines. Spirit Airline is uh, $1.6 billion market cap, but American Airlines is 4.2. Similarly, United is 7.76 billion. So, uh, and Southwest looks like is the largest company in terms of market cap with $16 billion in assets. So as the, as the companies become bigger in terms of market cap, they, you know, they become, uh, you know, they start to become too big to fail. You know, even when they have trouble, they find ways to restore their uh, ability to, to remain in business. Right. So, so you see that by looking at their, uh, 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 looking at the charts of their stock pricing on a long, long term, lo long term time horizon uh, to see whenever the stock goes down, does it recover? You know, so, so when the stock is going down, how long does it take for it to, to go back? Because, you know, you see that, uh, uh, that chart going up and down. So how much time does it take for it to recover? Does it recover or, you know, uh, so companies with large cap, they usually, uh, they tend to recover faster. However, there have been uh, a lot of spectacular failures uh, with the companies as well in the past and within airline industry, you know, uh, uh, there are a lot of names um, of companies, airlines that I have only heard uh, by reading in history. I've never ever flown those uh, airlines. And at some point, those airlines were the best and the, and the biggest airlines. They could have never failed, you know, those kinds of companies like uh, uh, Pan Am, you know, uh, and I'm sure there are others. I'm just using the word Pan Am because that that comes to mind in terms of uh, very famous companies at some point uh, in the past. So, <clears throat> um, okay. So, sorry. Um, the debt. What does this mean here? This uh, it says. Yeah, debt to equity. Yeah. So, for a company. Uh, so debt um, gives easy access or a quick access to capital. So, uh, however, you don't want to have a lot of... I don't understand from where you started. Can you start again? Okay. Debt to equity ratio is basically uh, you take uh, total debt divided by total capital. Right. Uh, but what it basically means is that debt is an easy way to borrow money uh, and it is a cheaper way to borrow money because when you when you borrow when when you take on a debt usually the um, the interest rate on a debt is much smaller and fixed compared to the uh, capital that you would raise in other manners, you know, for example, equity. When you sell equity, this, the shareholders are taking on a larger risk and therefore they expect a higher return. So it is more expensive to raise capital through selling more shares. Financing with the debt is cheaper because the interest rate on the debt is going to be much smaller than the expected profit uh, that people would expect, the investors would expect. But you don't want to have a lot of debt on the books either. Companies with a lot of debt shows that they do not have credibility among shareholders, that they're not willing to give them uh, capital through shares. 
But at the same time, if a company has no debt uh, and it only has shareholders, that means that the company is not utilizing uh, its ability to borrow money or raise capital with, uh, with debt as they should have because it would have been cheaper. So they are borrowing, they are raising capital by an expensive means that would be the shareholders equity. So you want to strike a balance between that debt to equity ratio. Now for me personally, um, I do not like to uh, take on debt in my personal life or in my business. Uh, I do whatever I do with shareholder equity, um, you know, but that's my my religious belief uh, that I do not want to deal in interest. Mm -hmm. uh, but for in terms of financial measuring financial soundness of a company, it is important to see that debt to equity ratio is reasonable. So they are not over leveraged with debt or, or they don't have everything being financed through shareholder equity because that's more expensive to borrow. So there, there has to be a balance. Once again, what's a good number for a company? Uh, nobody can answer that question. Uh, what you have to do is you have to compare uh, different companies and see which company is more leveraged with debt and which company is more leveraged with, uh, with shareholder equity. So it looks like based on uh, the red here, um, the companies who are uh, who have who, whose numbers are lower are the more sound companies um, based on just this column. Is that right? So lower number would mean uh, that they have uh, less amount of debt compared to shareholder equity. If they have the numerator is larger. Uh, that would be the total debt, then the number would become bigger. So if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, that shows uh, too much leverage, uh, too much, um, um, yeah, too much leveraged company, you know, they have more debt than equity. So for this, um, it means that, uh, I mean, for, for this, because I didn't mark this yellow, I didn't mark this red, uh, it was on there automatically. So, um, so it looks like uh, the column marked it, anything that was close enough to one, 1% 1 um, or higher, they marked it red automatically. Yeah, so this is uh, this this color coding is from Finvis. Yes, uh, I, I I don't know what it means, um, really. You know, uh, of how they are color coding this. So I'm going by the value okay. that they represent. Okay. So, so so for example, for Alaska Airlines, uh, it means that they have more capital capital. Uh, so, so their capital is, is mostly, so 65% of it would be uh, shareholder equity uh, and only 35% is debt. Okay. Compared to Hawaiian Airlines where 71% of it is coming from debt. Okay. Compare, you know, as opposed to equity. Um, oh, Delta oh, Airlines. Sorry. Southwest. Uh huh. Delta Airlines. Delta. Has a lot more debt. So their, you know, their debt is higher than the equity. Okay. okay. So they have more money borrowed in debt versus raising it through uh, shareholder equity. And these numbers are all based on quarterly statements, right? Because they're not changing all the time. Right. right, that is correct. That is correct. So what is the right number? So what are we looking for in this ROA 
column? What is it just by looking at this ROA column? What are, what are we looking for? The low number or a high number? A higher number. Oh. A higher number for ROA, a higher number for quick ratio, a higher number for ROE, and a smaller number for debt to equity ratio. Oh, you said smaller for ROE too? No, no, no. Higher for ROE. Doc, can you please repeat the... the okay, the first three, first three columns, quick ratio, return on assets, ROE, they should be higher. The higher the number, the better. Debt to equity ratio should be smaller. Well, according to my belief, it should be smaller because I don't like too much debt, right? I, don't, I, I like the companies that have no debt. But that's not the reality. So I go with smaller number. But from financial perspective, you want to find a middle ground. Mm -hmm. So too, too small of a number shows that they are not properly leveraged, that they have a more expensive way of raising capital for their, uh, for their uh, assets. A very high number, like 1.61, shows that they have too much debt and not enough shareholder uh, money. So shareholder equity is small. Uh, and debt is too high. Now, the, I told you about the good things about debt. The good thing about debt is that it is cheaper in terms of maintaining, you know, you pay a fixed interest rate, which is much smaller than a profit uh, percentage that you would have to pay if somebody, if there was an investor giving you the same amount of money. The bad thing about debt is that debt is a lot more inflexible compared to shareholder equity. When you have a shareholder while they're expecting a higher return, they're also assuming a lot of risk. People who give debt, banks who give debt, they do not assume any risk. They give, I mean, they assume some risk, but not a whole lot. So no matter what happens, uh, if the company goes bankrupt, people who have given debt are first in line to be paid by the sales of assets of that company. Okay, so for example, you know, um, from, from, from a real life example, you know, you buy a home on mortgage, let's say at some point, you are unable to pay for the mortgage. While the bank took some risk, their risk was covered because the bank still owns your house. So you can't make the payment. They'll start the proceedings for, what is it, what is it called when they start that proceeding to kick you out and sell the house? Foreclosure. What is that called? Foreclosure. Foreclosure, yes. See, I don't even know about it because, <laughs> because I wouldn't borrow money to buy a, a home. You so, would not borrow money to buy, buy a home? I would not. So you're going to just buy it outright or you're just not going to buy a home? I'm not going to buy a home until I have the money to pay. All of home. it, 100%. Right. You're still in debt, remember? No debt. Okay. So, uh, so that foreclosure, so banks are a lot more safe in terms of lending money because at least they still own the asset. And if, if, the borrower could not meet, meet uh, his or her obligation, they'll take over the asset and they'll sell it to recover uh, their money. So let's say you borrowed half a million dollar to buy a home um, and you continue to make payments for four or five years and then you decided you didn't wanna pay that money and you, uh, you, know, you let it foreclose. So the bank will take over the asset, will sell it, and let's say bank still uh, has $300,000 worth of uh, equity in the house. So, and the house sold, sold, sells for $350,000. They'll take their $300,000 first and give you the rest. 
Okay. So, so their assumption of risk is much smaller um, because they have more rights. But if you are a shareholder and a company uh, goes under, you assume a lot more risk. So if a company went bankrupt, you are, as a shareholder, you are at the end of the line uh, to, to be paid any, um, uh, any investment, any, any money uh, from the sales of the assets of that company. So all the, all the uh, debt holders will be paid for. So for example, Allegiant Air, you know, uh, if they went under, if they went bankrupt, all of their money is going to go to to their uh, debt holders because they are 1.61% leverage. And they'll still have uh, some uh, lenders who will not get paid. So forget about any shareholders getting any money. Compare that to Southwest Airlines. If they went bankrupt, 27% of the pro, uh, of the money that they that can be raised by selling their assets would go to uh, the lenders, but there is still a whole lot of money left over that can be distributed to the shareholders. Does that make sense? Yes, I like Southwest. <laughs> I have a question. Okay, me too. So um, my question is on Thinvis. Uh, what is the difference between short float and SHS float? Because like they're right next to yeah, each other. Float, um, yes. Yeah, share float, yes. Share floats is the, the shares actively being traded. And the short float is uh, com uh, people who are betting against uh, this company and, and hoping that the price of the share will go down. Oh, I thought, okay, so when I was told to add the columns, um, I'm, I did it wrong because I thought that was like a short word for a short float. Okay. Yeah, no. So, so you, all of you do not have to have the same columns. You, you, I mean, of course you should have columns for quick ratio, return on assets, uh, and debt to equity, but you can have more columns, um, you know, uh, so that, that'll inform your analysis more. So you can see Asaki is going with ROE and the employee count and the market cap and the average volume uh, and the shares outstanding, shares of float and, and short float. So those are good numbers to have, but you can have more, uh, uh, more factors in your own analysis. And where are you gonna get that information from? Finvis, right? Finvis is gonna give you all of those numbers that you need. And if, if, for some reason, they do not have that number. You know how to access um, balance sheet and uh, uh, and uh, income statement and calculate these numbers yourself. So you know how at the bottom of a uh, of Finviz, Finviz or however you say it, um, it has like these sections that are in white, green, red, and stuff, and it, ha it has dates mm -hmm. and then like words and stuff. So, so dif different ad analysts. So if it's a large company, um, uh, a lot of analysts will be evaluating, um, you know, what you should do. Can you, can you go down a little bit? Um, they will be making recommendations, whether you should buy it, whether you should sell it. There'll be uh, different companies that, or, or analysts that may be making uh, uh, recommendations on the worthiness of that stock. Um, so, uh, go down a little bit, please. Scroll down, yeah. Okay, so for this, there is only one analyst, uh, Jeffries, which on August 5th, 2019 said, buy the stock. Wait, wait. And after that, there is no uh, recommendations from any analyst wow. because this is not as big of a company. What is it? What is the market cap? Uh, it was 140 some million, 146 million, right? Mm -hmm. So let's pull up um, a big company. Let's pull up Amazon. Oh my gosh, they have news all day, every day. Uh huh. Every few minutes. Yes. But before news, the section between that table and the news, you know, you see this? 
these are all the different analysts. So for example, Goldman uh, is saying buy this stock between $2,600 to $2,900 range. Um, Telsey Advisory Group, Wolf Research, uh, Edward Jones. So everybody is giving you different type of uh, analysis. So uh, Telsey is saying that this company is an outperformer. Edward Jones says uh, hold or buy. If you, if you already own it, hold it, don't sell it. Um, and if you can buy more. Uh, so this is, this oh, is where, and then you can see the frequency. April 23rd, April 22nd, 17th, February 26th, January 31st. You know, a lot of these companies came up with, uh, with either buy or outperform, um, you know, analysis. So, so these companies are, these analysts are making recommendations. So let's look at Tesla now. Let's see what kind of. Uh, Wait, I, when I was looking at this last night, I said, you know what, I'm going to add this, this a column. I want to add this as a column. Yes, yeah, that, that would be a good, and, and actually you could have multiple columns. Yeah. Uh, what does overweight could, means in, the, in those uh, news? Yeah, so, so different companies have different uh, models for representing their analysis. So the um, best would be to go to that company's um, uh, resource source and find out how they're defining neutral versus underperforming or overperforming or heavyweight, overweight or underweight. You know, um, my expectation is that overweight would be, I, I don't know. I don't even, I don't want, uh, don't want to speculate because I, I have not looked at that particular company's uh, um, analysis before. So it's so a good thing would be to, Start it by looking at how that particular um, uh, analyst uh, tra uh, uh, you know makes its analysis. You know, look at the process of analysis and what do these results from their analysis mean. So uh, go down a little bit so you can see for Tesla, uh, Bank of America, and Merrill Lynch, um, they have downgraded it as of April twenty second. Um, and they are recommending buying it as long as, uh, 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 as long as it is between 500 to 485 dollar range. Um, so neutral would be 500. Underperforming would be 485. Uh, Goldman is saying buy even at 864. So that's where I said you can have multiple columns, Asagi. Um, you know, Goldman could be your one of the analysts, that could be one column. What is Goldman saying? What is okay. Credit Suisse saying? But usually it's, it, I don't see any of them coming. Oh, only on the 18th, there was two analysts. Okay, gotcha. Oh, snap. Yeah, so I was so all, of these, all of these analysts would have different uh, timing of when they release their um, uh, reports. So they're not, you know, every, analyst is not going to release their recommendation on the same time at the same time. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So based on this, I highlighted everybody who was higher and who was lower. So obviously we can't make a decision based on that. Uh, yeah, not, not again, not just based on one number, right? You have to look at a multitude of these numbers. Um, so can we agree on who is the more sound company to invest in right now? As a class? Okay. That's my opinion. I don't know, but I, I, I like them. I've been looking at them personally anyway. I'm waiting for them to get a little lower. Yeah. So if you look at Southwest, okay. Southwest is, um, is the largest company in terms of um, uh, market cap. They are quite lean. Uh, you know, they have 60,000 employees compared to American Airlines, which is with a market cap of 4.28 billion, have 133,000 employees. Uh -huh. uh, American Airlines quick ratio of 0.3 versus Southwest Airlines 0.6, but they also have uh, a higher ROA, much higher ROA, um, uh, than any other competitor, you know. Which the, one has the largest? What did you say about ROA? Southwest. 
Oh, got it. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. So uh, ROE is is pretty good as well. Uh, the only negative factor here is the quick ratio, uh, that they do not have enough cash available to pay down their uh, current liabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, but for, like I said, for a company like this, with a, with a debt to capitalization ratio this low, it would not be very difficult for this company to borrow more money uh, to meet this, meet this quick ratio uh, issue in the short run, and once the uh, once the uh, uh, the industry starts to do better, uh, they'll probably recover a lot faster. Uh, and you can also see in terms of uh, shorting, this is the lowest. This has the lowest number. You see that? Um, one point nine one compared to as high as 19.37 for American Airlines. So a lot of people are expecting that this company is going to do worse. Their share prices continue, go, will continue to go down. That's why people are shorting. I have a question. So um, the, L, the ALGT one, so that has a 13.27 short float, but the, um, oh, wait. Uh, Quick ratio. Where's its quick ratio? Oh, it's a point nine. So that means that it has like the cash to pay for the stuff, right? So yeah. does that mean that it's good? Yeah, ninety percent is is pretty good, especially given the current circumstances. Ninety percent means that they have point uh, nine means ninety percent of their uh, current liabilities can be can be met with their liquid assets. But and so what is the so the um is there too much debt? So like yes. if you're looking at both of those factors, do they kind of cancel each other out? Like it make you stay away from it? Yes, for <laughs> personally speaking, mm -hmm. yes, I would stay away from that company. Okay. Um, but their ROA is pretty good. Their ROE mm -hmm. is pretty good too. So it's not so that one is is not is not too bad. American Airlines just seems to be the worst one to invest in right now. But um, I was thinking just as American Airlines. Okay, something you said here, people. Oh, sometimes a company becomes too big to fail, and mm -hmm. they find ways to remain in business. Look at when a company goes down and how much time. It takes for the stock to recover. Companies with large market cap take less time to recover, but it's not always the case. Right. Um, so you, you, you hear uh, Trump constantly talk about how he is uh, going to pump more money into the airline industry. Uh, you know, he continues to say that we have to save the airline industry. Mm -hmm. And historically speaking, um, uh, U.S. has protected its uh, airline industry in ways that a lot of other countries do not. So for example, US is the only, is one of the only countries, I mean, among, among the few countries that do not allow international airlines to fly domestic routes within the US, right? So all these international airlines are coming in, but they are not allowed to fly within the country uh, except for, for, well, there are some exceptions, but, but those are exceptions to the rule. The rule is that, that people, uh, the airlines would not be allowed. And why do, why are international flights, international companies not allowed to operate in US? It is to protect the local airline industry. Mm. So you have to be an American based airliner to fly between cities within the US. So that's a, that's a form of uh, uh, government protection that is given to our airlines. Um, you know, if you go to Europe, nobody cares, you know, every airline is flying everywhere. They're flying within the country. So uh, a flight may take off from, from a country, from a city in France and land in a city in France while having no local staff 
uh, having no local presence. You know. So. All right. So uh, I just want to make sure we all under. Are, are we in agreement that Southwest is the better airline? In my. Oh, I'm sorry, Doc. Go ahead. No, no, I'm talking you go about ahead. Class, our class as a whole. Oh well, that's my opinion, but I, I I've been looking at it. Um, that that stock i like that company but i also been looking at jet blue and the reason why is because jet blue is so inexpensive the stock is really low i think it's like um eight or nine dollars or something like that mm -hmm. so i look at affordability and um not that i know what i'm talking about because i really don't but i look at affordability and i'm looking to try to see if i can get something on the cheap and i'm a good company jet blues uh they're um their inventory is practically all new, um, and I, I really like them and Southwest. But Southwest, to me, it has some room to go down, but I don't know. Okay. Another, another uh, way you can make decisions is uh, that buy stocks in companies that you actually use. Mm -hmm. So if there's a particular airline that you like to travel uh, uh with more than the others then then go ahead buy a stock in that company because you know you use that company so if you like it most probably others would also like it so so if there is a loyal base of customers who are also uh, shareholders that's a good thing for that company i also think um doc that because those are um to me, they're they're like I said, their inventory, their 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 um their planes are newer, um, and they run much more efficiently. Um, JetBlue came out with the announcement that they are making everyone wear the face the mask uh, on their flights. I think they're the first airline that said that. Yeah. Um, so they're like they're kind of outliers. JetBlue and um, Southwest they they changed the game in terms of how. Um, how we travel, how cheap we travel. Frontier is another one, but I don't even see Frontier on here. No. Um, but anyway, that's just isn't my analysis. There, isn't there one called like European Emirates or, or something Emirates? Like I hear that they're really quality, um, like airplane company. I would like to go with Southwest, my number one, but I want to wait for um, a spirit has um, her their quarterly announcements today, so I want to see what they come out with. Like okay, wow. yeah, that would be that would be another uh, factor to to uh, to consider when making uh, a decision to buy or sell. My concern with uh, Southwest, I mean Spirit, though, is that the debt debt to equity ratio is a little high. It sure is. Debt to, debt to capitalization ratio is a little high right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, it's uh, almost 10. Oh, wow. Well, it is 1029 right now. Um, I've wanted to um, highlight a few other things from Finvis. Give me one moment here if I can log in. Okay. What time is that announcement typically made for earnings? Well, different companies would have it at different times. The best resource for that would be uh, to look under your um, uh, your Think or Swim port uh, Think or Swim charts. Um, when you pull up a chart uh, for a longer time horizon, it shows you at the bottom of the chart uh, when. Uh, these customer calls are expected, then there could be, a, you can also uh, look at Yahoo Finance, uh, the, the schedule for, for these releases. Okay, so I wanted to show you a few things. Uh, let me share my screen. Oh, by the way, while you're about to share your screen, I was on a call. Robinhood alerted me of a GE call yesterday. I don't even know why, because I don't have anything in GE. So I got on the call, I got on the tail end okay. and it was refreshing and also a little surprising to hear how transparent they were in mm -hmm. that 
um, their highest, uh, what they're making the most money in is healthcare and something else. But it was it was refreshing and surprising to hear that even they said they have no idea when things are going to get back to normal, but they do. They are confident that it's going to take years before it gets back to normal. Right. And they they usually do electronics. GE. GE. Yeah, they, apparently they do much more than I actually thought. Yeah, um, G is very diversified. Yeah, very, very diversified. But um, they were very honest in saying, listen, we don't know when things are going to go back to normal, but we are, uh, we are definitely planning um, in our forecast that it's going to take years for things to get back to normal. So don't, you know, so let's just take. <clears throat> okay, so let me just uh, show you this. Screen, this is uh, my portfolio. Just yesterday, I made $31,400 on the paper money account. Congratulations. So, yeah. Um, on what? Uh, oh, on my. USO, oil stock. USO? Yeah. Oh, snap. <laughs> no, but I'm thinking that because I, I see I'm, I'm finally in the black with USL too. How did that happen? When they split, they split and said they're, they estimated that 30-something yeah. 30, 30 dollars, and it only came out to like 18. So is it up to 30-something today? Um, I don't know. I have not followed it today. Uh, and I want to focus on another important issue that I discovered yesterday. Uh, I wanted to show you this com this uh, stock. Um, this is ticker is OIL. Uh, this is Barclays. Um, something very interesting. Uh, it's uh, it's called what is it? ETNs? Yeah, ETN. So you you know about ETFs, right? Mm -hmm. An ETF is electronically traded fund. So a lot of people put money into the into a fund and that then that fund has a fund manager who makes a decision uh, to invest money in a lot of different companies. So so that would be a fund. Uh, many brokerage companies have their own funds. So Charles Schwab has funds. Uh, um, Fidelity has funds. Vanguard has funds but then there are electronically traded funds that anybody, even if you did not belong to Fidelity or, um, or Charles Schwab, you could still buy into. But then there's this other interesting thing called ETN. Uh, ETNs are exchange traded notes. Now, this particular stock is ETN from Barclays Bank. I bought 200 of these shares at 445. It went down to 266. However, I can't buy this anymore and I can't even sell the money that I have held in this company. At this point, my equity is $532. The total cost that I paid for the $200, 200 stocks was $890. So I'm already in loss, but I can't even sell this. Did they go bankrupt? No, they did not go bankrupt. So it says the stock is temporarily untradable. And, uh, you know, so I can't sell it. I can't buy it. Nothing is available for sales. So, so that got me curious. So I did not know that this was not an ETF and that it was an ETN. So yesterday I spent some time to figure that out. <clears throat> so ETN exchange traded note is a senior, unsecured, unsubordinated debt security issued by an under, underwriting bank. So that would be Barclays Bank in this particular case. So this was, this was such a wrong thing on so many levels. First of all, I don't deal in debt. And this was a debt security. So, so what happens is when you put money in this fund, in this trade, in this exchange traded note, all of that money 
is given out to companies as a debt, not as, uh, not as, you know, they don't buy shares using that money in that fund. They give out debt. So unknowingly, I was dealing in debt. So had I done my research, uh, pro- sorry? What do you mean they give out debt? So they give out loan, they loan money. They don't invest money, they loan money. Okay. So as a result, they are earning uh, interest on that money and they're, then they're sharing that interest among people who have bought that ETN. Oh. I did not, I thought it was an oil fund because you know the ticker is very uh, misleading and uh, uh, and it sounded all the language that they were using sounded it uh, made it sound like uh, it was an ETF. That's what I thought, but it was not. So, so these are similar to other debt securities. So they have a maturity date. They are backed only by the credit of the issuer. So there is there is no actual asset. You know when you when you lend somebody money, you back it by mortgaging something, mortgaging an asset. But in this case, in the case of ETN, there is no actual asset that backs that, uh, that loaned money. So the only thing that is being, uh, that is backing that uh, loan is the credit of the issuer, which would be the Barclays Bank. So anyway, let's go to Finviz and see what happened. There was a news item about it. I missed it. Uh, I read it after it had already stopped trading that stock. Um, so, so let's look at this iPad CDs B, S&P, GSCI, crude oil total return index ETN. I missed that ETN, I didn't pay attention. Now you can see the whole table is almost empty. See, there's no quick ratio, current ratio of debt to equity because it's a fund, it's, it's an ETN. So this would be the case with a lot of funds as well. So you get this quick ratio, you know, these types of ratios for companies that are actually operating. So even ETFs or, um, or uh, funds traded by, managed by uh, trade, uh, uh, trade brokers, uh, they would not have that kind of information available for that ticker. But if you look at this news, this was actually an old news, I think on the 23rd. No, not on 23rd. Okay, oil drops, Trump admin is overlooking hard cash crunch, uh, strategy, st- strategists, oil prices on track, API CEO. but you can still wait. Doc, can you tell me what made you invest in this stock, please? Yeah, my foolishness. <laughs> no, but you- <laughs> I, I was investing in oil, right? So I did not pay attention that this was not an ETF, that this was, this was an ETN. I looked for, for um, oil tickers. Oh, okay. So nobody told you about it. You were just looking for yourself. And- right, 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 right. So I wanted to pick up, where is that news? Um, so in this climate, we want to stay away from ETNs because people are 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 not- Oh, ETNs, e- ETNs are a bad news all around. Uh, I cannot imagine, you know, this is one of those complex uh, securities that, that these people, you know, white collar workers, they, with a lot of money to burn, they keep sitting on tables and trying to figure out how they can make the system more complicated. Mm. So, so no matter what, no matter what scenario um, he's saying, just stay away from it because it's not backed by anything. Right. 
Yeah. Ah, here. This was April 20th. So on April 20th, Barclays made an announcement that it will exercise its issuer call option. Call option would be that they are going to buy all of the all of these stocks and redeem in in full its iPads series, this oil um, index, ETNs. Holders of ETNs on the redemption date will receive cash payment per ETN equal to the close, closing indicative value of the ETN on April 23rd. So, so now I'm supposed to get my money back in cash from Barclays Bank as of, uh, based on the price as of April 23rd. So that is the valuation date. Uh, and then, you know, so, so these when banks, they, when they put out these ETNs, they also put out a call option. Call option would be that they have the, they have the sole uh, uh, permission to purchase all the stocks in that ETN at any time. Nobody can challenge them. Oh my God. So that's the case with ETNs. Now let me go back to ETNs and give you a small comparison. Um, there, was, uh, there was a nice chart. Oh, yeah, right here. ETFs versus ETNs. Uh, ETFs are funds. ETNs are structured senior debt notes. So this is a note, not a fund. Then uh, ETFs hold the underlying asset. So when you make an investment uh, in a company, you are holding their shares. So you are holding their underlying assets, it, not an ETN. And then track underlying assets, track underlying assets. That's true for both of them. Trade like stock. Uh, ETNs also trade like stocks. Um, uh, I do not understand what slippage means in this case. Slippage ref refers to difference between the expected price of a trade and the price at which the trade is executed. Slippage can occur at any time but is most prevalent during periods of higher volatility when market orders are used. So if, oh, okay. So, so you place a market order, you look at a price, you think, uh, you know, you, you see a price, let's say $10, but by the time the, act, the order is actually executed, let's say it executes at 9.90 instead of $10, so that 10 cents difference would be slippage. Okay, so in, um, where is it? In ETFs, there can be slippage, but in ETNs, there's no slippage. What you see is what it gets executed at. Uh, ETFs are more liquid. You can sell them at any time. Hey, sorry, ETNs, hold on, hold on. With the slippage, you said what you see is what you get with, with ETNs or ETFs? With, uh, with ETNs. But you just said that if it... If yeah, it's, because there's no market order for ETNs. No, no, but I'm trying to understand what you said. You said if there's 10, if it, if you see $10, but it's really nine ninety, that... No, no, no. So, so you, you're placing a market order, right? So the time duration between you hitting the send button and the trade actually being executed. There may be a few seconds difference. Right. That few seconds difference can cause a different, because you place a market order. Right. So the only way you can get around the market, uh, the, the, the slippage issue is that you always place right. limit orders, right? So as long as you're placing a limit order, there's no slippage. But with ETNs, there is no slippage anyway. So anyway, so this is this is something new 
that I discovered yesterday because I found myself in this particular situation uh, where I was dealing with um, uh, with this. Uh, well, I understand. I'm still trying to understand the slippage. So with ETFs, if I place the bid at ten dollars, and um, and it's really at nine ninety. Uh, I'm going to be able to buy, I'll, I'll still be able to buy it because, <clears throat> no, I, I don't understand. I understand slippage versus slip, no slippage, but can you do the comparison between if I see the stock at $10, what's going to happen with the ETF and what's going to, ha and what's going to happen with the ETN? So ETN, ETN would be, ETN would always be like a limit order. So would it, would it, would the buy go through? Yes buy and sell will both go through but they will they will go through as if they were limit orders so so there is no slippage you know when you place an order and the actual execution will be at that same rate um but the problem that i'm facing right now is that i can't even sell uh this and i have to wait until barclays makes that decision uh for me oh wow so so, so be careful as you invest um, in, in different stocks, okay? Got it. Yeah. So, oh, by the way, just today, I've already made $1,000 and I haven't even looked at it yet. You see that? So this is just the today's uh, um, performance. What company is that? Uh, these are all sorts of companies. This is a long list of uh this is a fund here right say that again the fund that you're oh no no he, you're looking at your overall yeah 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 uh, overall uh, portfolio okay okay well it's uh 10 48 already um let's uh let's focus on your um paper money accounts uh, see what you can do, um, try to invest, uh, but make sure to get out at the right time as well. Uh, keep looking at the charts um, and let's meet up on Tuesday next week. I do have one question. Do you sure, have one? go ahead. Okay, so I saw this news on, um, can you go to Robinhood? I am on Robinhood. Sorry, can you uh, type in Amazon, A-M-Z-N? Sorry, is it? No, not, not Amazon, Zoom, ZM. If you scroll down to the news. Yep. Right here, um, Market Watch, eight hours ago. Google made, no, sorry, no, the first one, in brief. Can you click on that for me? Yeah, pattern case against Cisco. Can you tell me what this means? Okay. Let's see. Oh, wow. Did they remove it? No, it's coming in. Uh, this is uh, this is a different type of browser that I'm using. I'm going to, I'll talk about it in another class. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. That's okay. Um, let me do that in the other window. Yeah, now this one. Uh, I don't know. That's what I want to see right now. Because we had competition. Because of the way I can make it on something. We need to have competition. By the way, their stock went down yesterday because of that second news. Google makes meat free for all users. Mm -hmm. so now they're down to what I bought it at almost a month ago. Right. 30 something. So what okay. does this mean? Okay, so a patent case against Cisco slated for Zoom-based trial. So a judge has decided to conduct bench trial in a patent case against Cisco systems using Zoom video communication technology, denying 
a bid by Cisco to instead use its own WebEx teleconferencing platform. So uh, basically a patent case that, can you read the that, next Cisco one? Has, that Cisco has done something wrong against Zoom. Can you read okay. the next, the next uh, paragraph too? Yeah. In an order issued last week, U.S. District Judge in Norfolk, uh, Virginia, rejected arguments by Cisco that Zoom's platform has too many security flaws and should be replaced with WebEx or a Google Inc. product. And here's the full news. Well, yeah, that was the problem. I couldn't uh, go forward. Okay, so they just gave us a brief and not giving us the full detail. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think happened here? So um, Cisco, which makes uh, um, video communication uh, hardware, mm -hmm. they are uh, they are discriminating against Zoom. They are they are encouraging their um, users to use either Cisco's own Webex uh, teleconferencing platform or wasn't there another one? No, just that. So they're basically saying that just use WebEx teleconferencing. And, and Zoom is saying um, uh, that Cisco is violating uh, Zoom's patent in WebEx. So WebEx uses its own, uh, uh, you know, telecom. See, the problem is all, all of these teleconferencing systems, they have similar technologies and similar systems. So, um, so Zoom is basically alleging that Cisco has infringed upon its, its patent rights by denying um, to use Zoom and only uh, making WebEx available on their systems. And the, and the reason Cisco is saying not to use it is because Zoom has too many security flaws. But security me, flaws. I'm reading this as Zoom, uh, Cisco had to use it in order to be able to figure out. Right, that's what Cisco is saying. But Zoom it took some of their their um their their uh, technology. Right. So, um, you know, of course, Zoom has had problems. I mean, just yesterday. In uh, Lisa Blunt Rochester's uh, press, uh, not press conference, a, a, a meeting, a video meeting, um, you know, somebody hacked the uh, the screen sharing and showed, uh, you know, racial slurs and and swastika and those and types of things. Whose call was that? Oh, you did not know about this news? No. Okay. Wait, was that Mr. Arnie's class? Lisa no, Blunt Rochester, you know, our Lisa. Uh, She's a, uh, oh wait, wait you're from new jersey so you wouldn't like oh you are in new jersey okay yes yeah she's, said, um, lisa, like who lisa <laughs> blunt rochester she was hosting she is our congresswoman oh she was hosting a meeting oh. and uh her meeting was hacked uh right oh. here uh, lisa blunt reacts to racist hack for of zoom meeting Oh my goodness. Okay, guys, let's meet up on Tuesday. In the meanwhile, if you have any questions, suggestions, please feel free to send me an email. But if I, if I take some time in responding, please, uh, please understand that I have a lot of other things going on as well at the same time. So I will get back to you or either, if I don't get back to you, we'll address that issue in the next class. But please feel free to share whatever you may want to share. Thank, okay. you, thank you. Thank you. We Bye. appreciate you so much. Thank no you. No problem. No problem. You're all welcome. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.